Hi, everyone. Coach Matt Francis here from Providence College, defensive coordinator and face-off coordinator for Providence Men's Lacrosse. Uh, today, we're going to be talking face-offs and specifically uh, wing play and drills to develop your wing play and your wing unit. I want to give a big shout out and thank you to the uh, Richmond Men's Lacrosse staff uh, for starting the Coaching Through Cancellation platform and for inviting me on to talk about face-offs. Um, huge thanks for all giving us something to look forward to and learn from during this uh, challenging time. Hope everybody's staying safe. Let's get started. So what's important and how do we cover and coach uh, wing play uh, with respect to the face-off game? First, uh, you got to have a philosophy. Uh, for us and for me at Providence, our philosophy is to execute our wing play to give our face-off man the most time and room to pick up the ground ball on his own. Now, is that the end-all be-all? Uh, no. Uh, and if you've got elite wings and maybe a face-off guy who's got fast hands, but his ability to direct the ball or pick up the ground ball is uh, needs some work, then maybe you design a wing play philosophy where you want to put it back to the wings and design it that way. Uh, for us, um, we're all about giving the face-off man time and room to pick up ground balls. Uh, the butt end side is positioned to box out based on where we're trying to put the ball, and that's because the butt end side is a lot of times called the draw side uh, for the face-off man. It's where the ball most often comes out if we win the clamp. Um, the head side is positioned to box out based on where our opponent is most likely to put the ball, based on scouting, based on what's going on in the game, based on the matchup. Um, and then lastly, um, we're always going to start with at least one man on the defensive half of the wing line, um, maybe two, but never none, protecting against transition. And we'll talk about how we execute uh, during the phases of wing play and the phases of a face-off um, and keeping that defensive half covered. So technique uh, on the wings, we're bent uh, much like a wide receiver, maybe even a little bit lower with our inside foot back. Uh, the foot that's closest to our wing opponent is back so that our first step, we can explode and step in front of our uh, wing opponent. Uh, working a box out first. Uh, we're walking, working a box out first. Keep our face off man clean, as I like to call it, um, so that he's not getting hit or blown up from the wing on a ground ball that should be his. Um, in a tie-up, we're looking to mirror our teammate uh, on our opposite wing. Uh, so that we have both halves of the field cover. Uh, and then we want to maintain depth as well. Sometimes that can kind of conflict with the box out ideal, uh, but we'll show through some film what that looks like. Uh, essentially, I don't believe in burying ourselves on top of the face-off man. I think that makes it um, a more difficult exit for the face-off guy. Uh, and also it allows you to get ping, pinned by your wing opponent um, when the ball is directed out of the face-off. Um, Technique-wise, for wing play, a big part of it is communication as well, both pre-whistle and post-whistle. Um, so those are two phases of communication for wing play uh, and rope unit play. Uh, and then there's phases of the actual face-off. Pre-whistle, which is where a lot of communication happens, uh, some positional adjustments. Quick draw, when the ball is redirected out of the face-off within the first second uh, of the whistle. And then tie up. What are we doing on the wings in a, in a prolonged tie up where the ball has not come out of the face off uh, right away? So here's a framework for wing play communication. I like, I like to show coaches that are that need some help or are wondering how to communicate or how to align themselves or how to talk through what they want to do. Uh, so first, uh, we've got these quadrants one, two, three, and four. You can use those to say, you know, however you can set it up however you want with your wing unit. You know, talk with your face-off guys, talk with your, your wings. Um, they can say, hey, I'm trying to put the ball to two here, talk to four, trying to put the ball to four here, or you can use those as areas to align your wings. Um, you can also use, you know, the clock communication here, you know, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and communicate that way when talking about where you want to put the ball um, in relationship to your wings. So just a framework, I, I strongly encourage you to have a system uh, to align your wings in a clear and concise way, um, pre-scripted pre alignments, and then also talking about where you want the face-off man directing the ball. Um, 
pre-whistle communication, really important for the face-off man to make a call uh, to his wings. Um, that's going to allow them uh, no, to know where you're working and aiming to put the ball. You can also have a call for when the face-off man wants to put the ball directly back to the wing, and that should only be called by the face-off man because he knows what's, what he's able to do in that particular matchup. Make sure that communication is early and clear and also get that communication uh, confirmation from uh, your wingman. Wingman, you're looking to box out based on your face-off man's call, and you're also looking to give him, like we mentioned earlier, uh, time and room to pick up the ball himself. You always want to align one man on the defensive half to stop transition uh, and be prepared to mirror uh, your wing teammate. Talk to each other. Mid face-off, before the face-off, the, the three-man face-off unit has got to talk, and the wing's got to talk to each other while the face-off's going on. Um, you also should have a call to tell the face-off man that no one is matching feet with you on the wings uh, to let him know that, hey, I'm open if you do want to put the ball directly back to me. Uh, but also you need to be able to adjust if, you're, if your opponent dekes you out and then matches feet with you last second. Uh, you should be prepared and have a call uh, to let your face-off man know that, hey, I'm covered now. I'm covered now. So post-whistle, mirroring and communicating. You know, if the, so we talked about pre-whistle communication. Um, we talked about the quick draw phase. Uh, you know, initially on that first whistle, again, your inside foot is back. First step is to box out so that on a quick draw, uh, your face-off man wins it out clean. Uh, you are boxing your man out and not allowing him to crash down your face-off man and create a 50-50 ground ball. Uh, if it's not quick draw and there's an extended period uh, of tie-up, uh, that's when we're working to continue boxing out, but also we want to mirror our face-off man. So in this diagram, uh, this long stick on the head side of the face-off is coming in on a 45-degree angle, keeping the defensive half covered. Uh, you know, if you can imagine these face-off guys spinning in here, you know, if the LSM comes this way, then the wingman opposite is mirroring him. You know, if he rotated back counterclockwise, so would his opposite wingman, you know, always staying mirror image of each other. And then ideally, you never end up with your, your wings on the midfield line at the same time because then both forward and back are not covered um, by your personnel. This maintain depth concept uh, keeps you from getting pinned and beat to ground balls when your faceoff man wins it. Uh, if you're, in my opinion, if you're buried on top of the faceoff man and your faceoff man is winning the clamp, uh, you're just making that exit harder. It's another body for him to exit through, and it also allows your opponent to pin you um, and make it more difficult for you to get a clean ground ball. So lastly, in an extended tie-up, you can communicate to your face-off man using any terminology you want. Here I've got listed forward and back, uh, where he can direct the ball, whether it's space for him to pick it up or if it's space where he can put it back to you directly. Um, so that's post-whistle communication for the wings. Now, drills to develop successful wing play. Here are four drills that I love that we use at Providence a lot that help our face-off men um, exit to space based on traffic in the wing play tie-up scenario. And then also mirror drill and three-on-three -three short field face-off to one shot um, are tremendous three-on-three -three face off drills uh, to develop wing play execution, philosophy, and also uh, chemistry, which is a huge part of the face-off game. So again, uh, three drills that I love to develop successful wing play. Medusa drill, great drill for face-off men to work on exiting through traffic, simulating a lot of bodies in there on wing play, um, having to read space to get through and pick up tough ground balls through checks. You know, that you see our face-off teammates are or trying to make it difficult, trying to trick a guy into one exit. Uh, but this is a great drill to work on, not only spinning, staying low with our left hand on the clamp execution, but exiting to the proper space where we can have enough time and space to pick up our own ground ball. Again, Medusa drill, these three guys on the outside are like the three heads of the snake of Medusa. 
and then they got to make a read on their exit. What space is going to allow me to have time and room to pick up the ground ball on my own? Mirror drill, okay? So here, I'm talking through the drill for the first time here. So we're walking through it with our guys, installing our wing play. See, I've got a circle of cones, you know, keeping our guys off the fryer head, the logo. That's kind of like our maintained, our maintained depth area here. And now you'll see I'm trying to direct traffic where if, if the white jersey here starts coming this way, then the white jersey here would mirror him opposite. We've got two face-off men in here. Black jersey is putting the ball out on this half of the field. White jersey is putting the ball out on this half of the field. So a little screw drill for the face-off men. Wings are working to communicate on the first whistle to, to execute their mirroring technique. On the second whistle, face-off men put out a ground ball, and it's a live ground ball one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so the, the wings are working on that one-on-one -on -one ground ball competition. So down set whistle, face-off men are boxing out. They're maintaining depth along the outside ring of these cones, and they're working on mirroring each other. You know, if they're not doing a great job, they're trying to focus on just boxing out. You know, if you're a coach, maybe you point to one wing. You know, I'm pointing to these wing guys opposite of me one way to go, so this guy has to react and mirror his teammate. Uh, that's a great way to, to change it up and make sure they're, they're, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing on the mirror action. And if they're not doing that, and I say, I'm doing it now. So here again, I'm pointing, pointing for one guy to go one way. Now the opposite wings mirror the other way. Then you roll out the ground ball on each side for a live ground ball. Three on three short field face off to one shot is putting it all together. Those wing play concepts. Uh, it's working on Medusa drill for the face off men. Uh, it's working on mirror and maintain depth uh, drill that we just showed for the wing guys. Um, and now it's live. It's short field, so it should end in a shot. Um, and there's different wrinkles you can include in this drill that I, I, I posted on the slide that you can refer back to. But um, we've got four by four nets on the restraining lines here. Uh, so the winners of the face-off uh, should go down and play three-on-three three and look for a shot. Um, this not only works on boxing out, mirroring your wing teammates, maintaining depth off of the face-off dot, uh, but it also works on starting and preventing transition, which are important roles for the wing unit. Uh, so uh, you're looking to score. Uh, you're looking to have a defensive mindset as well by not sliding up field um, and also being prepared to help uh, against Dodgers that are attacking right off of the faceoff. So our wings are aligned, you know, black versus white here. So eight comes in this way. Now 44 has got to react and mirror him over here. Starts to mirror. But what he doesn't do is maintain depth. Right here, black jersey pins 44 of this long stick on a ball that goes out outside the circle. Now he's pinned and beat to a ball uh, that was won by his faceoff man. Uh, that's why I believe in maintaining depth on the wings and not burying yourself so close to the faceoff dot. Next Faceoff, not a great job at his faceoff man in black. Initial clamp, his butt end goes to the sky. Uh, if you watch my other video that we did for coaching through cancellation, a uh, lot of talk about staying low with the initial clamp on the left hand and then making a secondary reaction counter move, uh, which might include punching your butt end and sawing high and sawing down to get leverage. All right, so not a great job by this faceoff man. Better job by White staying low. Let's check out the wings here. 22 and 48 appear to be mirroring up, boxing out. That's pretty good. Both guys staying off the, the fryer head. Um, in this wrinkle, uh, we said face-off men, you have to put the ball out to your wings, all right? You could change that wrinkle. You say face-off men have to be the only guy to pick up the ground ball, so it really puts a huge emphasis on boxing out on the wings. Um, 
So those are some different aspects of it. You can also start the face-off men in, in a tie-up, or you can say blow the whistle, have the wings come in, and then blow in the second whistle for the face-off to start so you can really work on that tie-up action for the wings uh, without killing your face-off guys. Good tie up here, face off wise, really good saw down action uh, from number 39 here. Good mirrored up, box out on the wings. All right, really good job maintaining depth here by 27 and allows himself to be an outlet for the face off man. Good communication there to put it directly to his wing. And then we're looking to create transition. Um, you know, our goalies are in another drill on an area of the field right now, but you can also include goalies in this. So good job here. Good action fighting for position. Maintain depth. Sees this ball come out. He's got eight boxed out. Picks it up. Now we're, now we're creating transition, right? Black's got numbers three on one two on one here, you know, making those touch passes when somebody slides up field. It's a great, great emphasis for creating and defending transition in the face-off game. Resisting the urge to slide up field unless you can absolutely cause a guaranteed turnover. All right, so right here, not a great job of maintaining depth. You know, we've got Dude's totally bunched up on top of the fryer head. You know, if anybody was doing a good job of maintaining depth here, it was 47, and he's able to come out with one. And then it works on exchanging the ball under pressure. Uh, I kind of cut a lot of these clips to, you know, save some time so it doesn't always end in a shot here. You can work on, again, those pre-scripted face-offs where you're going back to the wing immediately, you know, with an initial box out. So that would be like a quick draw phase face-off win. And then you got to handle pressure. This guy's coming after you. You know, what are you guys going to do over here? Are we going to slide? Are we going to not slide? Really nice box out there. Now we're saying, all right, face-off guy's got to pick up the ball. Can't put it back to the wing. So quick draw face-off, box out your man, Allow the face-off man to pick up his ground ball. And then good job defensively, you know, when the black team by getting in the hole and not allowing that face-off man to create offense. Here I'm starting to face off guys in a four-point stance tie-up. Uh, blow the whistle for the wings to start coming in, start mirroring each other. Not a great job of maintaining depth here uh, by black. You know, bunched up here. But because 12 maintained depth, he was able to pick up that ball. Uh, but now he's got to handle ball pressure. And he doesn't do a great job of that. Great job defensively by Black, and he's rewarded by a one-on-none -on -one fast break in this drill. Again, starting the drill with a face-off tie-up. First whistle, wing guys come in, start boxing out, mirroring, maintaining depth. Then the second whistle, the face-off's live. So you notice here, black wing is right on top of the face-off. White says, I'm not going to get pinned in there. I'm going to maintain depth. Meanwhile, he's reading the draw, reading the clamp here, talking to his teammates. He's saying, I'm back here. And now he's rewarded with a big-time face-off win out of an extended tie-up. As a result, Black slides up field, which is a no-no, and he's able to create transition by passing this headman pass, and he's going to be rewarded with the goal the other way. Really great example. Everything you want out of the drill. You're getting the box out. You're getting the maintained depth. Um, you're getting the mirror action. So let's take a look at that with some different phases of wing play. Quick draw. Win for White. Bad initial box out here in our alumni game. Bad initial box out here. So really poor wing play. And it results in a 
pop up ground ball check cause turnover. So that's a face off draw that we won that we did not convert into a face off win because our wing play was not executed properly. Same thing. All right. Jared Newman, certainly tough task, you know, boxing out the defensive player of the year in the PLL, but he comes screaming down. We've got to be better at walling him off and preventing that hit on our face off guy. Same thing here. One draw for White. No box out here on number 14. All right, now some live face-offs here. Providence versus Georgetown. Face-off-wise, good execution of a low left hand with the initial clamp and then recognizing that he needs to saw down. Start using his left hand, punching it higher to pinch his plastic around the ball. Now check out great box out here. And number seven starts boxing out, but then he mirrors his teammate and maintains a little bit better depth. So his ball doesn't come to him, but he's got a good sight line on it to go get that ball. Um, and he's got our defensive half covered uh, in case the ball squirts out so we don't give up a, an unlucky fast break. Low left hand on the initial clamp. Then our, our faceoff man starts sawing down with his left hand wiggling back and forth, punching, working that plastic underneath his opponent's head. And you see 17 and nine mirroring each other here. Nine's a little bit less concerned with the box out because he's got to keep the defensive half covered um, while mirroring his teammate. Great exit, that's like Medusa drill, won the clamp, exits to space. And we do a great job mirroring up with our wings. 17 does a great job of this mirroring up here, providing an outlet in, in the event that our face-off man rolls back to him, which he does. Great box out by number nine here. Good job clamping down the line, uh, blocking against that rake, and then exiting to space. Number nine does a great job of keeping our face-off man clean, giving him time and room to pick up that ground ball on his own. And then an excellent job handling ball pressure by our faceoff man and 17 showing up, mirroring up, and receiving the ball uh, from the faceoff man. Different season, uh, same opponent here, Providence versus Georgetown. This is actually a man up faceoff for, for White. You'd see in a man up faceoff, why not box out overall over everything? Uh, because you have an extra guy. So number nine here is maintaining depth keeping the defensive half covered. You know, it's a three on two. So if we're able to win this draw, we should be able to direct it. Um, but 26 is doing a great job being scrappy, just boxing out over everything. So even if we lose the draw, he's, he's gonna keep 43 occupied and keep them out of there. Really good job staying low with our hands here. Number seven on, our, on the face-off dot. Really comes out with a big man up face-off win, directing it back to our to our poles, maintaining depth, and, and certainly we're man up there, so that makes it a little bit easier. But really good illustration of mirroring and maintaining depth. Low left hand, really good job at number seven face-off wise of getting into the ball. He's really good at staying low with his left hand and re-punching down the line to get the skinnier part of his throat of his stick underneath his opponent. She tries it. He's digging, 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 trying to punch his hands to the right, stuff the throat, as, as the face-off academy says. But notice the wing play. Good box out here. Bad job maintaining depth. Bad job maintaining depth here on number nine. And he's not boxed out. So we end up winning a draw, but losing the face-off possession because we're not utilizing the maintaining depth and executing maintaining depth here on our defensive half. So and, and another thing, too, is you got to educate your wingmen on what it looks like when a clamp is won or when a faceoff man has enough of the ball, uh, especially in long and extended tie-ups. If your wingman can start to understand what it means to win a clamp and what it looks like to win a clamp, they're going to be able to position themselves and have a greater instinct about where the ball will be drawn to by you or your opponent if they have a better understanding of what won clamps and lost clamps look like. 
So hopefully that gives you some drills, uh, coaches and players to work on with your face-off and your wing units. Um, those are some of our essential face-off and wing play drills that, and our philosophy that we work on with our unit. Um, so again, I just want to thank you uh, for tuning in uh, to Coaching Through Cancellation. Again, I'm Matt Francis, uh, Associate Head Coach at Providence College. My email and my social media handle are below. If you have any questions or want to reach out, I'd be happy to answer anything uh, you got on the face-off game. Hope everybody's staying safe and staying healthy during this time. Um, good luck. Be well. Go Friars.